Um, my name is Eri and I'm a development manager at EEX and today here with me is Tapio from the EEX team and Elisa will be moderating the chat. To kick off this morning, I'm curious to hear how everyone's morning is going so far. So please share an emoji or a GIF in the chat. Um, while you're choosing the right emojis, I'll just quickly remind you that since we're using Teams, please keep your microphones and cameras off until the Q&A session. Um, if you have a question in mind or want to comment or something, just drop a line on chat and we'll get to your questions after the discussion with the alumni. Um, so why we're here today is because we've received a lot of interest from people to hear what EEX journey really is in practice. So we wanted to bring light to the practicalities a bit. So this is the program for the next 50 minutes. First, we'll cover what EEX journey really is in practice, and then we'll get to the most exciting part. Our alumni will share their experiences and what they got out of the program. And after the discussion, we'll get to your questions. And we hope that after this session, you'll have a bit of better understanding what our unique leadership development program really is about and how it could benefit you and your organization. So now let's hear a short note from the founder of EEX. Please go ahead, Tapio. Good morning, everybody. I'm awfully happy to see you all here. Um, we think that we all need a vaccination, a vaccination against stagnation um, to keep courage to recover, to find new ways forward and make that market share. We think that every leader in every organization needs an experience of entrepreneurship. If your work involves anything like creating new business, growth, innovation, complex collaboration with others, different partners, every leader in every organization. So our mission is very simply to make the world more entrepreneurial, focusing on large companies and other organizations. This is what we do. Back to you, Evie. So how do we fulfill our mission? EX comes from Entrepreneurship Exchange. In practice, we place leaders from different organizations to support one startup team for one year. The leaders form an advisory board that consists of four to six people. In other words, one advisory board includes four to six people from different organizations with different backgrounds and also from different industries. So our teams are pretty much across everything. The main goal is to learn entrepreneurial skills and mindset with, in practice with peers, experienced professionals who are working with the startups, uh, startup company's growth strategy. So you learn together and you learn from others. It's a two-way street. The interaction also happens in a completely different level than in a traditional training or development program. Our alumni might share a bit of insights on this soon. So this is a unique leadership development program. You work with a real startup case that actually has an impact. This is not an executive MBA. You will not be sitting in a traditional classroom or listening to lectures on Teams, or you're not, you're not going to be doing speed mentoring, for example. You learn by doing in a safe environment out of your own office with peers. So thereby we provide for the mindset and drive. Organizations uh, sent their leaders to learn how startups push things forward, how they make quick decisions with minimum resources and grow businesses. This further um, helps the organizations and prepares them for growth and transformation. So throughout the year, um, there are 10 to 12 advisory board meetings where the actual learning and doing happens. So you listen, discuss, question, challenge, and bring your own perspective to the table. So you're all there to learn from each other and share the best practices from different organizations and the startup world. Uh, the EEX team is there to support the teams and help the teams whenever needed. But the main responsibility of the team uh, and the success of the team is nevertheless on the hands of the advisory board. So how will you work and learn as a team? 
In addition to these meetings, we have four joint events during the program. So uh, these are the places where all the participants get to network and get to know each other as well, outside of the, your own advisory board. So you get to share and reflect experience between the different advisory boards as well. Um, our next round kicks off in August 2021, and the one after that is in January 2022. So we have rounds twice a year. And for the August round, we're actually selecting the uh, participants and startups already this month, and we're taking uh, registrations for the January round as well. So that was a short note of EEX journey. Um, but now is the time that probably most of you have been waiting for, um, the discussion with our alumni. So today with us, we have Margarita Mussonen from DNA and Yuhani Kongkampa from Orion. These two experienced leaders uh, are among the two, uh, plus 200 EX Journey alumni. Margarita and Yuhani are currently uh, finishing up their round and they actually have their final event tomorrow. So they have experienced the EX journey during the past year, which has been uh, really exceptional. So we have, a re we have received a lot of questions from you at, in advance, but if you have any new questions in mind, just pop them in the chat and we'll get, get to them after the uh, discussion. But without further ado, uh, please, Tapio, Margarita, and Yuhani, the stage is yours. Very good. Thanks, Evi. Um... Maririta and Juhani, I will ask you first to introduce yourself shortly to the audience. Maririta, would you like to go first? Thank you very much, Tapio. Yes, I'm honored to be here too. Uh, my name is Maririta Mustonen. I work for the DNA and I have a strong background uh, for the telco background. Like, you know, 20 years of doing different business management, management project management, all sort of development tasks and so on. And now I'm heading team which takes uh, care of the B2B business for subs from subscriptions all the way to the uh, uh, contact center systems. So it's really exciting world. You may say that it's, it's something really like electricity or something so basic. But still, we are also there making a lot of new stuff. So exciting work life for me. But I'm also was really excited that I got to be in this program. Very good. Thanks a lot, Marjorita. Um, Juhani. Yeah, hi, all. My name is Juhani Kankampa. Really happy to be here to, to tell you about our story. I work for Orion as a director of strategy and business planning. And, and well, Orion is a, is a pharma company, so we, we, we develop and, and sell medicines uh, more or less globally. Before, before the current position, I was working for as a, as a director of, of, of development for our global operations. I joined Orion some five years ago. Before that, I was a consultant at the Boston Consulting Group and, and before that in, in the foods industry at um, Norwegian Fast Movie Consumer Goods Oracle. And yeah, now this, this, this journey, one year uh, coming to, to a close here. Well, Juhani, would you like to describe shortly about your journey? What was it like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, Tapia. So it's it's been it's been a very interesting journey. Um, obviously, starting in 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 September last year, um, uh, the big focus in the beginning was to get to know the the startup indoor that that we have been working with for for, for the past year. So 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 really to 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 get an understanding, an idea of of what the company is is, is doing and and. Uh, um, how is how is uh, how is the business model? You know what products do they have? What's the value proposition? What is the market they are in, etc. So it's it's a lot about you know learning and getting to know 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 the company and the people. You know what's the team and you know where do they come from? What's the background? What are their you know skills that they're building on? 
and and also also not only the um, the, the startup but also the advisory board. So so the team we are working with, and 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 then then basically you know working on two hands. So so there's a lot to learn definitely in the beginning to to get to the bottom of of, of what the company is doing. And, and and then at the same time to think about how can we help help the company and and what should be the role and the objective for the advisory board. So so it's been a really interesting year and and a nice 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 to be able to be with the indoor for 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 a year's period. So not only kind of like a short period where you basically get to know and 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 then it's then it's done, but but really to to be able to see. What's been going on during the year? Because actually, you know, with with these young companies, quite a lot can happen in a one year's time. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, Marjorita. How would you risk describe your year? Yeah, Arilyn. Yeah, it's been exciting year. There's been a lot of things happening for Arilyn, and also like you know, when it starts, it starts you are just forming a team. And you're thinking that, well, how can I support these people? Am I really being helpful for them or not? And it's been really, really exciting to see, uh, for example, Arilyn team, which is, they are like on top of these people. Like, you know, they know what they're doing and how they are going through the whole year, like, you know, applying for the money from EU and so on. So like, you know, I haven't had those experience before, so it's been really joyful to be in this journey with them and seeing how much they put effort to these things. It's it's unbelievable. And like, you know, we all want growth. It mm. doesn't matter if it's a big company or small to see how they are thinking about these things and so on. And also it's been really nice to get to know uh, other advisors and know to their background and how we can all support together. Mm -hmm. Ari. Well, you you guys certainly you had to pivot during the year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, could you do you want to tell Maririta a little bit more about the about Arilun, Elisa? Elisa shared some points about Arilun, but would, do you like to tell us a little bit about what Arilun does, first of all? Okay, so first when we got to know them, it was about the um, um, uh, galleries, basically. It was a strong emphasis on um, galleries uh, in, like, you know, you would say on net or so on. And, um, like, you know, the calorie is really niche thing. And then um, during this year, uh, we got uh, we got to um, sort of in the phase where we were challenging Arilung that how about uh, showrooms, like, you know, for the companies, mm. could you make more money through that way? And well, they launched their showroom concept a little while ago. Of course, they were doing that in a smaller uh, scale, but still, like, you know, the whole uh, idea that you can have, for example, for the company, like, you know, showroom, and you can uh, uh, have there, like, you know, your products uh, for the customer, and even then at the web shop there, and like, you know, mm -hmm. do it all, and have the experience. It's not the normal, like, you know, just, web experience it's more than like you know you don't have app you don't need to get app you can just mm -hmm. like you know do it um by just accessing like you know the web address so it's like right. you know a virtual experience and i kind of even though i'm in a telco business i was thinking that well is this something that like you know is this really going to be something but like you know First the calories and then like, you know, real showrooms for the, like, you know, the businesses. It, mm -hmm. I was really, really excited. Like, you know, I saw the development, what they made. Mm -hmm. But of course, this nowadays when, when lots of things are happening virtual, both both VR and RR are 
AR, AR are, are of course a big thing. Um, Juhani, would you like to describe indoor? Yeah, definitely. So indoor informatics, they develop utilization tracking for real estates. And that's based on security cameras, basically. So having security cameras, then apply machine vision, artificial intelligence, and advanced analytics to, to, to make it a, a, a utilization tracking and, and be able to tell then, you know, how much, when people are using the, the, the premise or real estate that, that we are talking about. And, 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 and also more specifically, how people are using it then. For example, for example, space and equipment management for, 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 for fitness operations, like, like gyms, like to be able to give the, uh, the management uh, proper view on what is, you know, what are the, uh, the equipment that people are using at their gyms, mm -hmm. what is the, the, the utilization and, and, and to provide and make sure that they do the right investments and and the customers can can uh, customer demands can be met. Yep. Very good. Um, would you like to also describe a little bit, Johanny, about your team to both the you know entrepreneurs, but more importantly, per perhaps the I know lots of in the audience want to know about the your advisory board. Who did you work with? Yeah. Yeah. So. So advisory board, we we were we were four of us, or we have been four of us. So uh, we we come from 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 different industries, from 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 Nokia. Uh, we have backgrounds of Nokia, I think Wärtsilä, Elinkeelämän keskusliitto, and then Orion. And uh, so 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 different different industries represented, and also different functional backgrounds. So, so human resources, um, research and development. Uh, my my background from strategy and operations. So, so it was it was really a, a nice diversity of backgrounds, and, and and I think that was that has been a big asset along the way. So obviously, obviously, people asking different questions. Um, being able to see things from different angles, you know, just like that. You listen and, and you think something and, and then when you hear a question, you just think, you know, in your own head that, wow, I just, you know, there was no way that I would have approached it from that angle. And, and that has really, you know, been a big asset, I think, and I hope and I believe for the uh, indoor informatics, because I think that's been definitely Definitely one source of, of value for them that they, they get the exposure for, for different different backgrounds and, and different kinds of thinking. But not only not only to the advisor, but not only to the indoor informatics, but also, you know, like on a personal level. Uh, definitely a big part of, of the personal um, learning journey. That's that's wonderful. Um, Maririta, do you yeah. think how was your team? Was it as good as Johannes' team? Uh, yeah, well, I think it was even better. <laughs> no, well, I think our team was a bit similar to your team, meaning that, like, you know, different backgrounds, four of us. Uh, also, one person with strong background from Nokia and now working for Kone. Uh, really, like, you know, background from development of ecosystems and businesses. Uh, then uh, one with the strong background of strategies and then one with the like you know totally i would say a finance man so like you know and then me so it was kind of good combination and it i think it was really much appreciated also by Ireland because like you know you get these different people working together they have totally different backgrounds and maybe we like you know if it would be not this program maybe never met each other but there we worked nicely together. And I think that was the one of the main things that it was really thought by EEX 
this how to combine these different backgrounds and the team because now I felt that we could support Arilun. Well, at, at this point, I can let you in uh, with the secret. Um, it's not actually for us, it's not that difficult. And this is because we think by and large we get the best from the best organizations. And therefore, we have enthusiastic people who who make up the group and you guys you guys do it, not us. I mean, you are the guys who actually do it and help the startups, which is very important. But the diversity diversity is very important. And as you said, it, lots of people have said the same that normally what you do is that you you hang around with your own industry people, even globally in some cases. You, you go around the globe and you meet the same people in seminars across the globe. Um, here is uh, a one possibility to work with very, very diverse team on a hard challenge. Um, Johanna, you, do you want to elaborate a little bit? How did you how did you leverage that diversity? You said that you 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 were helping each other to think in, from different angles. Well, one concrete way to do it was that that. I mean, in the very beginning, we developed an agenda for us for the whole year, like objectives and, and topics that we were um, planning to work on together with the with the with the startup company. And as we as we went along, then then you know some of those topics got got crystallized a bit more, and and we found we we basically decided that once we have a topic that. Where, where somebody has a, a relevant background, then he or she will work as a chairman for 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 the meeting where we would handle that topic, and that in 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 the way how we work meant that that you know that person will then be responsible for the preparative work, uh, you know, pre meetings with the with the with the um, startup company and then run run the meeting, and that was that was I think you know looking back that was a good way to 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 make. The meetings productive and to be able to leverage then the relevant expertise in the best possible way. Thanks. Margarita, did you notice the similar structures? How did you utilize each other? Um, yeah, we made, um, well, it was one year, so first we just had these meetings, the whole, whole team, and then we realized that this is not so productive because, like, you know, we want to have these different teams. So then we decided that we will uh, sort of split it into smaller ones and then we have these bigger one, bigger meetings. So we can sort of, you were calling like, you know, pre-meetings or whatever, but we had these smaller meetings, like, you know, somebody who's more into marketing, go to market stuff and so on, for example, then finances and so on. So yes, we had them first together, but then we split it into more like, you know, smaller groups because it was easier, of course, also with the calendar wise to get people together and get discussing whether going on. Yeah, and, and we've noticed lots of you guys did a wonderful, wonderful job in finding new ways to work during the pandemic as, as well, because some of you have been very busy, but you still have had the time and some of you guys have most of you actually have made all the all the meetings, which is which is incredible considering the year we've all had. Um, let's let's go a little bit deeper because I know this is this is something that the audience have asked us and um, are interested in hearing about your learnings from the journey. Um, Marita, would you like to continue? What what were what have been the 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 biggest, maybe the top three takeaways from the from the journey? Well, for me, since I never worked for the smart uh, startup, for me, it was really brilliant to get the insights, how they work. That was one of the like, you know, biggest learnings for me that, yes, even though you are working for a bigger company, you are thinking the same same things, how to grow. Actually, it's pretty simple. And then uh for that i was also um sort of just like you know the learnings from the other advisors 
uh, what they ask and like, you know, their backgrounds uh, were really something that I found really useful too. Yes, I would maybe touch those same items, but not in the same way. So that was one of the learnings. And then uh, I also thought that, um, well, first when I was like, you know, asked that would I like to join the program, I was kind of hesitant that like, you know, well, I normally want to jump into everything, but then I was thinking that, well, how can I help them? And I, during that journey, I found out that yes, I was helpful and that that was one of the things that made me really happy so you understand that like you know you have your own background and you are maybe doing something through uh, your whole career and then you think that yes they are doing totally different thing uh, yes I can still help them just by asking the questions that like you know I get deep down well, that's just very awfully interesting and lots of people say that first of all what you said that in the beginning you have to learn the people and everything and 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 get your sort of your head around the challenge you have because it's so different but also that you recognize you recognize both the skills you have you didn't think you have and in your case of course you've been doing lots of product management over the years and we we, we knew it from the outset that it would be useful for any startup are struggling um, and helping of course is important as decision exchange so for us it's very important that we re genuinely help the startups it's a real case the startups need the help um, all possible help because it's they need to learn their own business um, wonderful stuff and and I want to ask Johanny also first your top three learnings and then we can dig into some of these maybe in more detail. Yeah, so in the very beginning I thought that you know it's it'll be interesting to to see you know I, I mean coming from a uh, big or rather big corporation and then you know how, how can you compare and, and how can you what can you learn what can you take from from a startup way of working and and I think one kind of like in my top three is is what I then uh, started to think as a topic of freedom of freedom to operate. And I need to give you a little bit of a background. What I mean by that is that it's kind of like fascinating to see how the people. I mean, in a startup, I mean, Indoor had basically four employees, and it basically you know forces, of course, all four to be in the in the front line. You know, they are just you know all all over all over what the company is doing. And that also, you know, enables actually the whole team to kind of like, you know, they they are on top of the stuff, and 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 that's that's they 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 do decisions, they can do fast decisions, and and of course, you know, there's basically no bureaucracy because you just make decisions. And then, you know, I tend to think that, you know, what's how much how much should we when we do business development, when we do R and D, how much should we give the people who are who are you know closest to the work, uh, basically, you know, freedom to operate in that sense that they can make decisions related to their work that they are doing. And then, you know, on 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 the other uh, uh, side of it is is the uh, kind of like corporate decision making processes and and bureaucracy, if you will, that basically slows things down, especially if handled poorly. And and that's you know that's that's a topic that I thought and and still uh, I'm thinking a lot. So how to balance the decision making versus control uh, and, and corporate processes and 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 of course as 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 you as you hear me speaking, you know I tend to think that more power should be given to the people who are closest to the work and believe that you know they know the best how to do. But certainly, you know, there needs to be barriers. There needs to be, you know, decision making processes. But the point is that um, uh, uh, you should work uh, hard to to minimize the related bureaucracy because that slows things down. Another and, 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 and the second top three for me is 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 actually related because it was fascinating to see. I mean, uh, talking about uh, pivots 
you know, I'm not really sure how big of a pivot it needs to be so that you qualify as, as a pivot. But anyway, our indoor made in, in what I call a pivot during the year. So they basically, they were, they were working on four products in the beginning. And then, and then, you know, in the latter part of the year, they had a focus on one with a smaller focus on the other three. And, and, and that focus to, uh, uh, alignment to focus on one, it was fascinating to see because, you know, eventually that happened in between two meetings. So it was, you know, a matter of, I guess, a couple of weeks. And then they actually decided to do that. And it's kind of like, okay, you know, we stopped doing these things and we focus on these ones and it means this, 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 and this. And now we start to work on this. And our plans are basically, you know, reiterated and our objectives are reiterated and go, go, go. And it's kind of like, whoa, what just happened? And, and, and it's fascinating to see the energy flowing and, and, you know, company just, you know, taking off to a new direction. And, you know, related to my first point, that was, that was, that was kind of like building on, on, on that same thinking that, wow, I mean, you know, I guess it's not realism to, to think any of like that in a, in a larger corporation. But, but then the question is that how close could you get to that sort of an agility and again, mm -hmm. fight again that, that, that momentum momentum of slowness that I guess creeps into to, to more or less every corporation along with time. Now this is this is of course a discussion that we we hear from all the advisory boards. I mean the decision making is one of the one of the top three for for I think almost everybody in the program. Um, and the freedom of operate, I mean it, the one aspect of this just to give an counterbalance to counterbalance what you said what is that in it's like in a chess in a startup because you're not anywhere yet by by definition you have a temporary organization that is seeking to build a scalable business model you actually have to make decisions you can't you you can't stop moving because there's nothing there yet so it's all about learning and moving and making decisions. And so, so we, we, we either learn to make the decisions faster, we die. Very simple. But you, honey, you had a third point. Well, actually, my third point was the one that I already mentioned earlier. So, so, so the diversity and the power of diversity oh. from the team. So. And this is, this is, of course, something that you all, all sort of have to learn to work with because you all had very diverse teams and I know that it causes lots of lots of learning in the beginning. Uh, the one thing I, I, I want to discuss a little bit about the, the focus. I mean in a startup we have lots of leeway. I mean we have lots of opportunities to explore what we're going to do. So finding focus can be difficult. You have the opportunity to look at widely but then you have to fo focus makes things happen, right? exploration finds you the right things and then the focus makes the the the, the things happen um so lots of lots of the teams and lots of startups they struggle with finding the focus so finding the focus is one of the one of maybe the learning uh, um margarita you said something about being different but being the same as well should we discuss a little bit more about this that okay the startup is supposedly very different but then again, it's not. Yeah, like you know, like Johan said, we also should act fast. Yeah. And like you know, uh, if I'm thinking about, for example, the pro product development, yes, we have nowadays a lot of agile teams and so on, and it is about like you know giving the power to people who are doing it and trying to make things fast. So like you know. Um, even with the bigger companies, you are kind of you are looking for the ways how to how to work like startup. So this is the thing that um, well we are learning a lot from startups to <laughs> make things like you know go market first or so on. So and like you know it's been always the case that if you have a lot of layers and the decision makers it it's will it will slow it down 
those people who are actually doing it, they know what they're doing. So that this is something that we see in startups. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, you know, they are doing what we are wishing to do, so to say, in a bigger company. But in a, in in a, in a start, it helps that in the startup, sort of the strategic, all the levels are there. They are yep. present. So you don't have a separate strategic thinker uh, somewhere off the. Uh, Johan, how do you how do you feel about this? You were you were saying about the decision, and you also hinted towards this decision uh, versus control and freedom to operate. But isn't that within the strategy? You work in the strategy, right? Well, I'm, so, so you're referring to, 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 to Orion now? Uh, no, in, in, general, in general, that if, if, you, if, if you need the freedom to operate, then of course that happens within the strategy. Mm-hmm. And that's where you build, if you have a strong view of where you're going, then you can have, within that, you can have the, uh, the freedom to operate and make the decisions, right? Well, yeah, I, I guess, you know, that's that's the core question. So how much, you know, if you think it, think it uh, as, a, as a leader, as a, as a business unit leader, head or, or, you know, somebody who has a big organization, how much are you ready to delegate? Uh, you know, how, how big of a decisions do you dare to delegate? And I, I guess I would be tempted to say that the larger the decisions the organization can make, the, the more clear it has to be what's the overarching strategy and, and the objectives we are pursuing. Yes, you need a certain level of simplicity there. We have questions from the from the audience. Um, there's a question about to what extent you feel that you can disseminate your learnings for your own organization. How do you how do you utilize this further? Johan, would you like to start? I think th- this is this is a great question, and 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 this is a question that I've been thinking a lot myself. I think I think you know, the, the, for example, these examples that I just described. Um, I guess you know, it's it's not realistic to to think that that a larger company can act like like a small one. So in that sense, it's not like a plug and play that let's do it like they do. But but then, as I mentioned, it, it's it's really about you know. How how do you need to change the structures and way of working and way to make decisions and 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 maybe even you know parts of the organizational structure to be able to increase the speed and agility and lower the bureaucracy and 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 you know the the slowdown momentums that that the organization has. So I I'm it's probably you know it's it's. It's it's many questions that 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 it has raised, and and the answers. I mean, if they would be easy, they would have been done already. So so it's probably you know that that it's a set of questions and ways of thinking that I take with me, and basically hope that you know they will help guiding towards you know better structures and and increased speed internally. Yeah, thanks. Margarita, how do you feel that you can utilize this um, and be able to share it? Yeah, well, it's um, mainly, I would say, it's a way of thinking that I learned mm-hmm. from this. And yes, just to challenge myself every time when we're doing something, for example, um, asking me, would I do it if it, it would be my own money? So, like, yes. if- not just thinking the company money, well, it doesn't matter, of course, it matters, but if it would be my company, would I do it the way I'm going to present now? So this is one of the things that, like, you know, let's go there and think mm-hmm. about it, like, you know, differently. Um, yes, and this is, the, this is of course, the, the, the change of development always starts with the people. And in, in our case, we don't. We are not claiming that we can change the whole companies, but we can change few, few, few leaders at the time. And it all starts with the leaders, of course, in in a company. Um, and we are working currently with a number of our partners, where we have maybe a couple of dozen of alumni. How do we can spread the good word, and how do we share the the entrepreneurial mindset with the others? And it starts. As Marilita said, often with the the accountability, thinking as this is owning it and thinking it as your own own business. How would you 
do it and taking responsibility for the future. Um, I'm looking at other, other questions here. We had, we had a one simple question uh, from the audience beforehand. Um, what have been, been your biggest surprise, Marit? What mm -hmm. did you not expect? Well, pandemia, <laughs> not seeing right. these people, yeah. but actually we agreed that we will have, like, you know, when, the, when we get these restrictions down, we will actually meet. So um, yeah. um, that was surprising because uh, I was kind of waiting for interaction, like, you know, with the, like, you know, boards and stuff. Um, but like, you know, apart from way of working, um, like, you know, for me, I've never been in the process uh, with, like, you know, applying money, for example, for EU. That was really surprising how much you have to do. And, like, you know, there are so many, like, you know, things that you have to do for there to get the first step. And then you have, like, you know, then you're applying for that you can get through the process. And it was, like, you know, something that I really never understood that it, it is extremely difficult in my point of view. Johanny, what was your biggest surprise? Oh, biggest surprise? I'm, I guess it was, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was a surprise or it's hard to kind of like uh, um, think back for, for all the expectations, but it was at least a nice surprise that I think we were able to 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 you know bring value to 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 indoor and 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 actually I think rather rather fast so in, in the very beginning it, I, I guess it felt that oh Jesus you know how do we understand enough and and you know it's it's only been you know one or two meetings and there's still a lot of questions and you know when will we be on top of it but then I think still you know that that it was rather fast that that it started to be productive and well one should ask of course from the startup company how they feel it but but I, I i hope to be able to speak on behalf of them as well that that it started to be quite productive already early on so that was at least nice to see and experience well this is this is something that also echoes with 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 lots of your colleagues are are saying in terms of feedback to us is that there's a multiple layers of learning. You learn first your team, then you learn to work with them, then you were learn to start up, you set the agenda, you figure out how where do you should focus and, and you learn to contribute and you actually then contribute and you learn learn more from the diversity. So there's a multiple layers of learning. And of course what we like to say is that this is the startup that has must learn a business is a wonderful place to learn business development. But hey, I want to thank you guys. Uh, if question ha uh, audience had more questions, please shoot them to the chat right now. Otherwise, I will excuse our wonderful, wonderful alumni. If no other questions, then I will thank you a lot, Maririta and Juhani, and I'll uh, turn over to Evi. Thank you. Thank you. What an insightful discussion. Thank a thousand thanks to Maria Rita and Johanny for sharing your experiences and learnings. I have a strong feeling people now have a better understanding what EX journey really is in practice. At least I hope <laughs> they do. Um, now that uh, you've heard a bit about what the program is in practice, I'm uh, curious if you're considering about participating in EX Journey or want to discuss the opportunity a bit more, send an emoji or uh, hey on chat and we'll con contact you after that. But summing up the discussion, our alumni emphasize the value that diversity brings, gaining valuable viewpoints to discussions and topics. Um, gaining new insights on to a startup company that help understanding the actual challenges the company faces and the importance of fast pivoting and how to balance uh, the freedom to operate on corporate control. Um, it's ever important now to find new ways to collaborate and be willing to find new solutions. 
as said before, uh, this is a completely different from a traditional uh, leadership development program. And if you want to experience uh, strategy work, hands-on strategy work and learn by doing, instead of sitting in a classroom, I encourage you to apply to the program. Um, here is a bit of info of the next round. So our next round kicks off in August 2021 and the application period for that is now open. And as I said before, we'll be choosing teens and the startups already this month. And the following round after that begins in January 2022. Um, Elisa will drop a flyer on chat as well as a link to our application form. And we will contact you after you filled out the application. Or you can contact me or other RT members directly as well. I believe Elisa shared my contact details as well on the chat. Also, if you know anyone else who you think should um, be part of EX journey and participate in it, suggest this to them and let us know. Our participants always get a bit more when they get to share and reflect their learnings together with their own organization participants. Um, at this point, I want to thank everyone for joining us this Sunday morning um, and listening to our, what our alumni had to say. Our team will stay here online just for a few minutes if you want to have a chat or have, have a question in mind. But for the rest of you, I hope you have an awesome day and I hope to see you join EX Journey. Thank you. If you have any questions, we always want to chat. Thanks, Evi. <clears throat> no problem. What a wonderful morning. I mean, the weather. <laughs> yes, <laughs> also. it brings a lot of energy when you look outside and it's it sunny does. It does. for once. <laughs> yeah. It should be like this for many days from now on. So, ah, finally summer. Yes. <laughs> yes I think the summer officially started today. That's the yeah. First oh yeah, year. that's true. First summer month. Yeah. It was a very interesting discussion. Good insights. I'm sure we will continue the discussion tomorrow. With the, yeah, it was the nice whole to hear. Group. Yeah. 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 So I think there are no further questions from the audience. Hmm. Do we still have Aki here? Or is he working hard? somewhere else.